Earthquakes are one of the most powerful forces in nature, powerful enough to split highways, break overpasses and bridges, There's a gas leak. Let's go. rupture water and gas pipelines, crack walls, buckle roofs, and flatten buildings made of concrete and steel. This uh, three-story uh, parking structure collapsed. At least two buildings have collapsed, one 17 stories high. There are millions of earthquakes each year, but most are small, usually a size or magnitude of five or below on the Richter scale. Earthquakes measuring 6.0 or higher do the most serious damage to buildings, bridges, dams, and other structures. California's 6.7 Northridge quake in 1994. The damage in the billions, critical infrastructure leveled in just seconds. The world has a magnitude seven once or twice a month. Most of those higher magnitude earthquakes happen along cracks or faults in the Earth's crust, many of which, like the San Andreas Fault in Southern California, run under and through areas full of people and roads, bridges, and buildings. There's no way to make these structures completely earthquake-proof, but scientists and civil engineers are working to make structures earthquake-resistant. Three, two, one. We are trying to learn how earthquake affect buildings. We are trying to design buildings that have a behavior we can expect. Engineers have learned which designs are most stable by studying buildings that fell and buildings that didn't in major quakes. Buildings with open ground floors like apartment complexes built over parking spaces or office buildings with huge lobbies are more likely to collapse than buildings with more interior walls and columns on the ground floor. Buildings like the Transamerica Pyramid in San Francisco, wide at the base and narrow at the top, are more stable. In the magnitude 7.1 Loma Prieta quake in 1989, this 49-story building shook for more than a minute. The top floor swayed more than a foot from side to side, but the building was not damaged. In Tokyo, you could see Engineers around the world have learned to design yeah. buildings, especially multi-story uh, skyscrapers, yeah. so that in a major earthquake, they bend but don't break. They're built this way so that when the building moves in one direction, it can move into another direction. Some structures are even built on giant shock absorbers. This is designed to separate the building from the ground motion of an 8.6 event on the San Andreas Fault. More flexible building materials are important, too. Structures made of unreinforced concrete are more likely to crack and collapse in a quake. So are buildings made of hard stone, like granite or limestone. We're seeing uh, very similar fracturing. Structures built with materials that have a little more give, like wood or structural steel, can better withstand quakes without cracking or breaking. Although in high magnitude earthquakes, wood can splinter and break, steel can buckle and even snap. Earthquake engineers have learned how to strengthen buildings and bridges with braces, especially diagonal cross braces, how to use steel rods or rebar to give greater strength and flexibility to concrete walls and columns, and how to reinforce and strengthen walls and foundations. It's a process called retrofitting. Even older structures can be retrofitted to withstand shaking. It reminds us how important building codes are and enforcement of the building codes, because building a building right in the first place is a lot better than having two hours to get out from it. Earthquake scientists and engineers can't predict when or where the next big one will hit. Whenever it happens, though, they'll work to build their knowledge of quake-resistant design, materials, and construction even more.